warm-ups again. Yeah, so today, everyone has shared, so, you know, previously I, I did a, a video on the fact that uh, warm-ups are useless, because that's what everyone was sharing. And now today, everyone is sharing how important it is that you warm up. This is the fitness industry in a nutshell. Don't eat carbs. Carbs are good. Don't eat fat. Fat is good. Uh, am I taking crazy pills? Like, am I the only one who sees this? Like, carbs are bad. Carbs are good. Fat is bad. Fat is good. Warm-ups are bad. Warm-ups are good. You know, plyometrics are bad. Plyometrics are good. The Olympic lifts are bad. The Olympic lifts are good. Holy shit. Like, everything is polar. And, and of course, today's post about warm-ups is that in your warm-up, uh, you should do things that you aren't doing in the workout. Because this is a good way for you to get in the, the stuff that you don't normally do. Let me tell you something. You guys should follow Dan John, okay? Uh, the warm-up is the workout. The workout is the warm-up. You can go ahead and rephrase that any direction you like because it means the same thing. So if we're going to squat, your warm-up should include some type of squatting movement, shouldn't it? Yes, it should. And if you're going to bench press, your, your warm-up should include a pressing movement. Uh, I plan to bench press today, right? So I'm going to do uh, sled pushes, air squats, uh, walking lunges, and I don't know, um, let's choose another, calf raises. What do you think that did for me? to prepare for my bench press. Right, so that's stupid. Um, I'm going to squat today, so I'm gonna warm up with pull-ups and push-ups. Yep. I am sorry to tell you the, the rational common sense part of this. The reality of everything all of these things is that the answer lays um, between the two extremes. So warm-ups are completely useless. No. But some warm-ups would be useless. I'm going to bench press, so I'm going to go pedal on the stationary bike for 10 minutes. That would be a useless warm-up. Uh, and, and the fact that warm-ups are necessary and, you know, you have to have them as well. Well, maybe, maybe not. What's your workout today? Oh, you're going to get on the stepper and go slow for two hours of cardio? You probably don't need to be doing a whole bunch of pull-ups, push-ups, squats, walking lunges, etc. in your warm-up. You don't need a whole bunch of glute activation drills for you to go sit on the stationary bike for 20 minutes. So, you know... You need to think about these things in a very, um, it's not complex. Like, this isn't complicated. This isn't typical. This stuff should be obvious to you. Um, I'm going to bench press. You know what's a great way for you to warm up for the bench press? Doing some push-ups, maybe grabbing some dumbbells and, and doing a really good dumbbell bench press with a very light weight where you really pull your shoulders back even further than they can get with the bar because when you have a bar the bar hits your chest that's all the further you can go you can't pull the bar through your chest but you can go even deeper with a dumbbell so dumbbell bench press might be a great way for you to prepare your tissues for a bench press because now you're working a range of motion that's even more than you're going to work in the workout and then here's the radical concept you're going to do bench presses with the bar. Yeah. You know, here's a lesson from Olympic weightlifting that I learned. Um, every single session, every workout starts with the bar. Just an empty bar. I've seen guys who snatched 200 kilos and they started their workout with an empty bar. I have seen guys who squat. 300 kilos and they started their workout with an empty bar hmm. that's pretty fucking clever isn't it it's pretty simple it's pretty straightforward you're going to snatch and uh today you're going to snatch 200 kilos it's amazing uh i won't ever do that i won't even clean and jerk 200 kilos um 
not in my lifetime. And these guys start off with an empty bar and they do snatches with an empty bar. And then they put 40 on and they snatch that and they put 60 on and they snatch that or sometimes they just jump to 80 because they're so damn strong. But regardless, they, uh, they start off with the empty bar. These guys that squat, you know, just squats 300 for three reps and they're up and down super easy. It's nowhere near even a three rep max for him. It's so easy. He's just like up, down, up, down, up, down, done. Easiest 300 kilo squat you've ever seen. And he does it for a set of three, like it's a warm up. Um, and yet he starts off with an empty bar. But he squats. He squats to warm up for squats. What a radical concept. I don't know a different way to explain this to you guys. Uh, so this has gone on entirely too long about such a simple concept. But what I'm really discussing here isn't so much how you should warm up. What I'm actually discussing here is the fact that these messages that you see on social media, you must warm up, you shouldn't warm up, warm-ups are a waste of time, etc. It's just, it's all of it's just so dumb. Carbs are bad, carbs are good. Fats are bad, fats are good. Cardio is bad, cardio is good. You know, will cardio make you lose your gains? Yes, it will. Anyone who tells you that it won't doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. Um... But will cardio make you lose your gains if you do 10 minutes a week? No. 20 minutes a week? No. But how about now we're doing hours of cardio? Hours and hours. And we're doing it every day. Mm. Yeah, it might. And I know someone out there is going to be like, well, you know, Ronnie Coleman did two hours of cardio every day. And that's true. However, uh, taking drugs puts you in an anabolic state. So even if you're doing a whole bunch of cardio and you're taking anabolic drugs, the anabolic drugs put your body into an anabolic state. For those of you who don't have that assistance, nothing wrong with it if you do. If you're a professional bodybuilder or a professional powerlifter, uh, I understand why you do those things. I understand why you use those things. But for the rest of us who are just average, um, if I do a ton of cardio, it's going to increase something called AMPK. AMPK is the opposite of mTOR. mTOR, mTOR complex 1 specifically, being this pathway by which we stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Muscle protein synthesis, that means growth. Okay, synthesis, growth. So, mTOR complex 1, muscle protein synthesis, muscle growth. AMPK, muscle breakdown. If you spend more time stimulating AMPK and muscle breakdown than you spend stimulating muscle growth, you're going to net muscle loss. So I assure you, when I was running 100 to 120 miles a week and swimming an additional 50 to 60 miles a week, I was definitely spending more time in a catabolic state, muscle breakdown, than I was in an anabolic state, muscle growth. Okay? It's, a, it's not a cardio bad, cardio good. It's not a cardio makes you lose your gains, cardio doesn't make you lose your gains. It's a dosage thing. You know, we need to get back to uh, this radical concept of, of reasonableness and understanding uh, nuance and dosage. You know, I mean dosage in terms of volume, right? So, so one set is not enough. But 50 sets might be too much. Okay. Is there something between those two extremes? Yes, there is. Running for five minutes a week is probably not enough cardio to keep yourself healthy. But running for, you know, 20 hours a week might be too much. Make sense? Hey. There's this story, uh, it, it's about these little bears and this, uh, this girl Goldilocks who breaks into their house and steals her food. Um, it's a really good story about this criminal. She's like a criminal mastermind, Goldilocks. You know, this one's too big, this one's too small, this one's just right. This one's too hot, this one's too cold, this one's just right. Hmm. Yeah. So, you know, this criminal mastermind, Goldilocks, you know, figures out that there's something between the two extremes. 
this is so fucked up. Um, I've taken this, this joke too far. Um, the point being here, that there's something between the extremes. So warm-ups are useless. No, they aren't. And uh, you must warm up. And here's a dozen different glute activation drills that you have to do before you bench press. Right, that's wrong as well. So I'm sure you guys are already on board with this. Uh, I mean, you watch my channel. If you watch my channel, I already know that you're more intelligent than the average person. You're not sitting there going, yeah, uh, you know, no warm up at all. Just go straight into your work set. Oh, and you're also not sitting there going that uh, you have to warm up for three hours of, you know, glute activation and lat activation and you better do some pelvic floor exercises before you do an overhead press. And gosh, you know, I better make sure I optimally activate my uh, rectus femoris so that I can do pull-ups. But that's what we have. We have a whole bunch of people telling you these extreme scenarios of you should never do this and you should always do this and you should never do this and you should always do this and we all know that there's something between the two. It's like I've said before, you know, that carbs good, carbs bad thing. Um, I think ketogenic diets are great. I don't think that they're great if your goal is to eat as big as possible. If your goal is to be the biggest dude, then you probably want to eat a whole bunch of carbs. But if your goal isn't to be the biggest dude, you don't need to have a lot of carbs. And I promise you, it's not going to cut into your training. I don't know where that idea comes from. Uh, the research is clear. After like 24 hours, your glycogen levels are, re are replenished just by gluconeogenesis. Um, but, you know, it sounds good to tell people you have to have carbs and you should never eat carbs. You know, we have to be extreme all the time because we have to scare people into, you know, I don't know, doing what we want them to do. And that's silly. Anyone that tries to scare you into something, like, tell that person to fuck off. In fact, you can tell that person Chad said to fuck off. Let them know that I told them to fuck off as well. Um, no one can scare you into, you should never eat carbs. They're poisonous. Um, because your body produces glucose anyways. So, like, if you're really that afraid of glucose, I assume that you're on a whole bunch of drugs to prevent your liver from producing glucose. Um, and similarly... You don't need to be eating a thousand grams of carbs a day. There's something between the two. Oh my God. I know. It's a radical concept. Someday people are going to look at this and they're going to think that I was a visionary and I'm sitting here just going, no, this is just common sense.